Are you looking for some good quality rechargeable batteries? I've seen a couple of videos recently covering the topic of rechargeable batteries, but most of those are covering the older style nickel metal hydride batteries. The problem with them is they're actually nominal voltage is 1.2 volts and uh, double A battery, especially alkaline normal batteries are 1.5. So as soon as you've even charged them up, they're already 0.3 of a volt down on your standard double A battery. And therefore that means in high power situations like cameras, they really don't last very long at all before you get the low battery error and the camera shuts down. I've actually recently discovered all of my AA batteries have long since died. You know, when they sit around for years, they typically die and dry out and whatever else the chemistry fails in them and they're no good. So I've been researching a solution and an alternative rechargeable battery and come across these. Now, these are actually quite old, these cells. I'll move on to these ones in a second. But they're very similar in uh, appearance. They've got these green tops here. And these ones are actually USB cells. So I don't know if you've seen them before, you may have done, but you pull this end off here and you've actually got a standard USB socket. And what you can do then is plug that into your laptop or into your USB charger and charge this thing up. And these are actually, I believe, nickel metal hydride cells. And again, they've got nominal voltage of 1.2 volts. So they are not much better than your traditional rechargeable batteries. The only uh, positive to these is you can charge them directly off a USB port. However, that does eat into their overall uh, area for keeping the chemistry in. So they are a reduced capacity. You know, some AA batteries can get up to 2000 milliamp hours, apparently, or even more. So that takes me on to these cells over here. These are kind of the updated version. Now, these are USB cell made by Moixa, I think. And these ones have actually got a brand name called, I believe you'd say that, Zenter. Z-N-T-E-R. But again, the appearance is very similar. It's kind of dark bottom with a green top. Difference being that while these have got a full size USB port on them, these have a USB, is it type C or micro B? I forget, but your kind of traditional USB port that's found on many mobile phone chargers. Again, these are a reduced capacity. These are 1,250 milliamp hour. Because they've got a lithium polymer battery in there, I presume, that would mean inside the battery is actually, um, you know, 3.7 to 4.2 volts and then somehow it reduces the voltage down to give you your 1.5 volts out and these are actually quite good because they are a nice stable 1.5 volt you don't suffer with that battery the voltage sagging down reducing down and then your device thinking that the battery's flat and thus giving you a low power error and shutting down early um, I've been using these in some quite demanding devices. So recently I got the Oculus Rift and it comes with these kind of joystick controllers. Here are the offending controllers here. Uh, I forget what their actual name is. Got some complaints about these. They're very, very new and one of the triggers is broken already. But essentially these take a single AA battery each. And I find that they will run the batteries flat, brand new alkaline battery in about seven or eight hours of playing. So they do get eaten through quite quickly, especially over a period of a month or so. Um, and I did find that the nickel metal hydride rechargeables are just really not up to the job of driving these. Um, and definitely not things like a little digital camera that I've got that takes AA batteries. But these on the other hand are really, really good. Uh, I'd highly recommend them because they are noticeably much better in these controllers. They have a nice long life, the controllers work fine, and they will also charge up incredibly quickly. That takes me on to charging them. They come with this rather uh, snazzy USB cable, uh, standard USB connector on one end, and four USB micros on the other end. So we just plug either one, two, or three, or four of these in, and we can charge them either individually or all together. Very handy off a single USB port. So extremely practical. Okay guys, so I've got the AA battery in here, or the lithium AA battery. This is actually dumping um, about 750 milliamp into this load here and it's going to discharge battery. I've got a concern that these are actually really for discharging lithium cells, so I have a feeling, because it's a lower voltage, and it seems to be reading a lower voltage, it thinks it's half the voltage it should be, that 
possibly that's not going to give the correct value. So let's just forget about that one. I'm just going to run that one off just to compare it to something more accurate. So I've got this uh, balance charger set up on my 3D printer here and that is connected up to the AA battery and the good thing about this smart charger is it does do lithium polymer but it also does NICAD cell so this is actually reading it at um, it is sagging a bit more than I thought it would at 500 milliamps so we're sagging down to 1.1 1 point so about the voltage of a, a standard nickel metal hydride might be or a nickel cadmium might be um, before you've even plugged it into the device it is pulling 500 milliamps off there and we're just going to let that run until the battery shuts down and I'll let the other one run until the battery shuts down I'd imagine that the voltage should be fairly stable and so I think there's a buck converter in there until it's just about to drop off and then it probably just shut down to zero volts so we've been uh, discharging for 118 minutes now nearly two hours uh, we're still at a 1.2 volts and we're approaching uh, 1000 milliamp hour so we'll give that another one half hour and see where it gets to. So unfortunately I missed the end of this uh, cycle but it did actually, I had checked it just before it ended and it was at about 1120 milliamp hour. So 1128 or so, it's rated at 1250 so not bad at all. I hadn't, I don't think I'd just taken that battery off charge so it'd been sat there charged for about a week or so. Um, so really, really very pleased with that. So there you have it. That's my review of these rechargeable batteries. What can I really say about them to sum them up? Well, compared to nickel metal hydride, the nominal voltage is 1.5 volts, which generally just gives a much better experience in anything that's uh, high current demanding. The fact that you can charge them off a single USB port is extremely convenient. You could just use a standard USB cable if you needed to charge them one at a time. Um, because they are lithium polymer based technology or lithium iron, I don't know which, uh, they must have a much greater cycle lifespan. So I'd imagine you could charge these things many more hundreds of times than you can a nickel metal hydride without that memory effect issue as well. And the uh, fact that they can dry out and just become unusable. So generally, if looked after, lithiums are going to be a much better bet. Uh, some of the disadvantages, they are reduced milliamp hour. So there are nickel metal hydrides you can get at 2000 milliamp or plus uh, 2000. These are only 1250, but they seem to be much more usable because that nominal voltage is much higher and the device stays on for a lot longer before giving you a low voltage uh, warning and shutting down. Well, they are more costly, you know, 14 pound, I think for four of them. But I think the increased life cycle should counter that considerably. Um, other than that, they are pretty much perfect. I'll be getting more of these and I won't be replacing any of my uh, nickel metal hydride batteries from now on. It's a shame you can't get them in the AAA. But you can turn them into C and D size cells by using some of these handy battery adapters. So we simply take our AA battery and uh, slot that one in there. We now have a C size cell and we can take this one and pop it in there and we now have a D size cell. Very very handy. Well thanks for watching and if you've got any questions regarding these batteries in particular or you'd like me to do any other experiments with them just comment below uh, let me know I'll see what I can do and don't forget to click that subscribe button.